Hey, what's up, family? Thanks for pressing play on another Bite Down Boxing video. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the host of the Bite Down Boxing podcast. And the uh, the man here at Pay Me No Mind Sports and Entertainment. And uh, it's about uh, 1.30 in the morning, uh, Monday. What is this, like April 8th or something? I'm down here at the Ohio State uh, Wexner Medical Center. Got to stay here overnight with my wife. And uh, I'm a night owl, so I'm up. I was going to get into um, just my thoughts on part two of the All Access, the uh, the Clarissa Shields versus uh, Christina Hammer, All Access. And um, just a couple of, I got three major points, I guess. The first one being, well, actually, you know, this is, well, today marks, uh, you know, us entering, um, uh, us entering fight week. So, um, you know, things will turn up this week. It doesn't appear that uh, Jerron Ennis is going to make it onto this fight, onto this card as some of us had hoped. Um, that was probably highly unlikely any, anyway, but he did tweet that out or post that on his Instagram page a couple of weeks ago, and I was kind of hopeful that it might happen to uh, just to add some, um, some more star power to the event itself. There is some heavyweights or, or are some heavyweights on there with, I believe, Jermaine. Um, I can't really think of his name at the minute, frankly. And Otto, Otto uh, Wallen. Um, and then there's another female fight on there and whatnot. But let's get into the, uh, the second episode. Again, very disappointed in the runtime. 14 minutes. I mean, that's, that's a glorified... Uh, you know, that's pretty much a glorified YouTube video for them to have the, the resources that they have and for this to be as an acclaimed uh, project or a series as this is, you know, an integral part of what they've done for their biggest fights. You know, I don't understand the 14-minute runtime. Um, I did go back and confirm that the Broner, uh, the Pacquiao Broner, and the... Uh, the Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury all access shows, those were either 22 minutes or, or 27 minutes um, for the for the heavyweight matchup. So uh, that's a strike right there. You know, I don't I don't I don't see what the diff what the need was when it was plenty of plenty of stuff to dig into with these two ladies and um, you know make the the backstory more interesting. What's up, fellas? So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, I do think they dropped the ball a little bit. And, you know, I was dead wrong in terms of the, uh, us seeing some stuff, some, some footage from Flint, you know, maybe going back to the beginnings of how, uh, you know, Clarissa Shields came to be. I thought that would have been a very uh, poignant part of her past to bring up and to showcase. But um, I think all in all, she did a very good job of, uh, you know, of selling the fight, in my opinion, you know, and, and selling the fight, sharing what her preparation is for the fight, being out there at the USA Boxing um, facility in uh, Colorado. And then, I don't know if they showed her transition into Miami, but she did have the Miami media uh, workout this past week, go to bitedownboxing.com. There was an article out there. I didn't have the photos from it. Something happened with the link, so I apologize. I did try to go back and get those, but I, you know my email may be responded to tomorrow, and if so, I'll go ahead and update the uh, the article with the additional photographs. But um, again, you know, and even with on the on the other side with Christina Helmer and her team. Um, you know, not to go back and show us some footage from some of her fights with the, you know, outside of Tori Nelson. It just seemed like it would have been a chance to uh, to familiarize us with her, uh, you know, with her with her resume. Uh, the one thing, and then with her being a nine-year champion, you know, reigning for nine years, it seemed like it would have been some way to uh, show us some of her work, 
you know, she has maybe 10 knockouts, nine or 10 knockouts. It would have been nice to see some of that footage possibly. Um, just seems like they left a lot. They left a lot of a lot of plays on the field, in my opinion. But um, it is what it is. The other thing that uh, that caught my attention down here in the middle of people working, and I'm outside of the emergency room as well. But um, I will say, you know, I thought. Uh, you know, her, I thought Christina Hammer's team, you know, it was good to see the work that they're putting in and taking this very seriously. Obviously, with reigning for, uh, you know, as a champion for nine years, uh, she's definitely a serious fighter, so I take nothing away from her. Uh, but like I said, I thought her uh, her team, you know, the coaches and trainers uh, spoke with a lot of respect about, uh, you know, towards uh, Clarissa Shields. Um, I thought that was you know, was, was good sportsmanship. I know there's been some things with, with Christina, uh, it's some things that she may have liked or uh, supported, some, 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 some racist comments uh, that were made on her page, I believe on Instagram, that she didn't really address the way some of us may have wanted. Um, but, but it is what it is. Um, there was one other thing, one note that I did make here that I, I wanted to call out. Um, oh, I thought it was in, uh, this was kind of something that really swings this fight a little bit more in, in uh, Clarissa Shields' favor, in my opinion, is the fact that I believe they said that uh, Christina Hammer only had 13 or 30 uh, amateur fights before going pro. And so I'm a little concerned, you know, that's, that's not a lot of, uh, it's definitely not a lot of amateur pedigree. And, you know, I, I know the, cr the criticism has been out there with Clarissa Shields that, you know, she was fighting at higher weights and that the, the, the depth or the pool of talent wasn't that great so that she hasn't really been tested either despite the fact that she's a, uh, I think she's a two-division champion now, unified in both of those divisions as well as a two-time gold medalist. So um, it's, it's how you want to look at it. Cool with me. Uh, moving to my next point, you know, <laughs> you know, the quote talk, in my opinion, the criticism of her quote talk, uh, that's that's more of a you problem. Uh, I think all of these fighters, I think for you to be, you know, to, to be making a living in, in, a, in this sport, in this hurt business, in this game right here, I think um, you got to be confident. You got to believe in yourself. Uh, you got to love, you got to love this stuff. And, you know, all of these fighters have either a mantra or, you know, a team mantra or, or something. And, you know, hers just happens to be, quote, I thought it was original as hell. You know, I mean, it's not that, you know, super creative just to throw a W in there to distinguish greatest woman. But I would have never thought of it, most likely. So I, I give her credit for thinking of something original. You know, it's something that she puts on her clothing and whatnot. And uh, it's not it, it, its not that serious. I don't know how her saying that really offends you or, or uh, hurts you in any way or questions your intelligence or knowledge of the sport in any way. It's just what she, it's just her campaign. You know what I'm saying? It's the way that she's market, marketing herself. You know, let's look at Tank Davis, Javante Davis, who markets himself as the one. You know, we don't see him fighting as much as we like to see him fight. We haven't even seen him face the type of opponent outside of uh, Jose Pedraza. We really haven't seen him really do anything in the ring to prove that he's the one. But there's not as much uh, there's not as much fire in the the protests and 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 the, even you know for some to go out and call Clarissa a bitch, you know, just for using this phrase, you know, for those of us that really can't, that really have no patience, you know, or self-control, we've let a, an acronym, you know, get a, push us to the point where we're calling this, uh, this sister, this young woman, even if you think she's, she's not ladylike enough for you. I mean, what's the, what's the need to call her a bitch? But, um, you know, that's happening. Teofimo, Teofimo, 
Lopez is out here running with the takeover. That's his hashtag. You know, that's his um, that's his mantra or mantra. And, um, you know, he's unproven to a degree at this point and now calling out somebody like, uh, you know, like the uh, like Lomachenko. So I don't see that same energy, that same fire and going after him and going after, you know, a Javante Davis. I'm sure, um, you know, I'm hearing Danny Garcia talk really highly of himself nowadays and, and, and referring to himself frequently in, in third person. Um, you know, Deontay Wilder is out here and he gets a hell of a lot of criticism, you know, almost on the same level, basically, as uh, as Clarissa Shields. But again, you know, you need something to, uh, you need to convince yourself of something to, to compete in this sport. So I don't really see what all the, uh, I don't see what the big outcry is against against Clarissa for for rocking with this this greatest woman of all time. I think she spoke on it uh, quite effectively with with talking about the fact that when 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 Muhammad Ali was calling himself the greatest, you know he hadn't proven himself just yet, but you know he put he spoke it into existence to some to some degree. So again, you know I don't I don't think we know what what. Uh, Basically, we don't know what somebody grasps on, grasps onto to propel themselves out of, you know, desolate situations and, and poverty and and, and um, you know situations where there looks like there's no way out of things, and to go out here and say, well, I'm gonna feed my family and I'm gonna make a living and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna change my life with this particular. Uh, craft right here, this occupation. So I think when you when you make that decision, and when you dedicate all, how you doing? Sorry. Oh, you are. Right. When you dedicate uh, your years of life to that, I think you should be afforded. We got to cut you. We got to give you some. Uh, we got to cut you some leniency and let you do what you need to do. It's not offending anybody. It's not hurting anybody else. But uh, my last point, uh, looking at the footage with uh, you know with Christina Hammer. I still, I still stand pat with the fact that I think she wants to have a clean pocket. I made the analogy to a football phrase with, um, with what her fight plan will be, what her approach to, to the fight will be, and I'm standing by that. I think she, she wants to have you know, a clean pocket and doesn't want anybody at her feet. You know, she's more like the, uh, the traditional drop back quarterback in many ways. How you doing? And I think uh, I don't. I think that'll be Clarissa Shields' uh, her objective, you know, to not allow her to have that way, to not allow her to feel comfortable, and to operate from long distance with her jab. I'm still sticking with that as what the major, uh, the major, I guess, mesh point might be between these two. But um, I already mentioned the lack of amateur pedigree is a concern. Uh, if I was getting picky, I would say, you know, she's, she looks strong. You know, she are, obviously has the, uh, the height and reach advantage and all of that stuff, but she looks big, she looks strong. Um, I, I see him putting in work, that's encouraging. Uh, it looks like we're gonna get a live fight, you know, come Saturday night. And I don't think, um, I don't think Shields would would do herself a service in uh, overlooking and discounting everything about uh, about Christina Hammer. And I don't think she's doing that. I just think she's confident that she's levels above uh, her because of, uh, she's just naturally, in my opinion, a better fighter and more fiery in terms of her competitiveness. Um, but Hammer, if I guess if I was being, if I was nitpicking, she did look a little, looked like she wasn't sharp on some of her uh, combination punching and, um, you know, things out, punches outside of her jab. Uh, now, it, it, it could have been at whatever part in the workout and she could have been tired, you know, she could have been on punch number, you know, 70 at the end of some, some part of the workout where they do a burnout type. You know, I know when I was going to the gym, 
you know, they send you over and we did something called crazy eights or something. And by the time you worked yourself all the way up to eight punches and then all the way back down to one, you know, your form wasn't the greatest. So uh, who knows what part of her workout that I saw where I, I saw something that I had a little concern about. But um, all in all, I think it's going to be a pretty good fight. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty good night. I think it'll be a monumental thing for, uh, for women's boxing. And um, like I said, while I think the, uh, the, part, the part two of the All Access was a little, little disappointing and not going back to the beginning for both fighters um, and not maybe selling that part of this to the, um, the casual fans or the new people that you want to pull in, I thought they dropped the ball just a little bit. But I think all in all, um, I mean, we didn't get to see much, uh, much sparring, which they never do show a whole lot of that. But usually we see some other people in the gym, the other people uh, in the gym, the other fighters in the background. And we can, those of us who've been around enough, uh, we're able to see some different things in the background and we might know who so-and-so is or, or what it what not we didn't see any of that so that was a little disappointing in my opinion but um i don't think it'll have any um impact negative impact on the fight um tune in i think it's gonna be a great night of action and um while some of us might not like the abrasive nature of uh of Caressa and seeing a woman, you know, talking stuff and, and, and talking about hurting, you know, the same stuff that Deontay Wilder is saying and many others. Um, I thought I thought Caressa uh, kept it all within the sport of boxing, what's common and normal for the sport of boxing. So uh, we'll see, man. It's, it's, it's a... a it's a, it's a tall task to get this done and to become undisputed, but I think uh, I think it's gonna happen. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get ready to get on out of here, go back up here and see how the wife is doing. Thanks for pressing play on this video and checking out some more uh, bite down boxing content. And um, enjoy fight night and fight week. Peace.